Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here to um, uh, Global Times. It's really a, a privilege uh, to be a part of this, uh, of this event. Uh, uh, also, thank you for uh, the OES to, uh, to host us here in this uh, so prestigious uh, uh, venue uh, to talk about such uh, important topic as uh, exchange, right, uh, in, in its uh, various um, uh, aspects. Uh, as you know, President uh, Dilma Rousseff of, uh, uh, of Brazil is an alumna of the uh, uh, International Visitors uh, Leadership Program, uh, in, uh, which I think uh, gathers a, an impressive number of other uh, former heads of states and uh, uh, Nobel laureates, so uh, th that shows the, the importance of, of course, of that sort of, uh, of initiative. But uh, here, uh, and also, I'm very thankful for uh, bringing the spotlight on, on Brazil and especially uh, what I would like to talk about, which is the uh, uh, it, uh, higher education uh, cooperation and uh, that dimension of our uh, domestic and foreign uh, policies. Actually, uh, President uh, Rousseff, in her recent inauguration for the second term, as president, uh, launched as the motto of her second term uh, in Portuguese, Brasil Patria Educadora, right? Which I think you could translate as Brazil Nation of uh, Education or, or something like that. Um, uh, which really shows not one of the uh, priorities, not one of the, uh, the motives, it's the, the uh, priority of, uh, of the government in, in the second term. Um, and one of the, the big initiatives under that uh, uh, priority is the uh, Science Mobility Program, the, uh, again in Portuguese, uh, Ciencias Sem Fronteiras, uh, which is uh, becoming a really a, a revolution in Brazilian uh, higher education. The numbers are impressive. Uh, we uh, already uh, sent abroad 86,000 students uh, financed basically by the Brazilian federal government. Uh, and of those 86,000 students uh, in the period uh, 2011 to 2014, 27,000 uh, came to the um, US. Uh, in the United States, uh, 400 universities in all 50 states uh, received uh, Brazilian students uh, under the program, which is basically concentrated in the uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics uh, area. Uh, and it is one of the signs that it's really a, a political priority in Brazil is that although we are living in a very strong fiscal contraction, uh, the uh, program has been uh, renewed for another four years and the idea is to send a similar number of uh, students uh, under the program abroad over the next four years. Although everything else basically is being cut in, in, in the budget, but uh, the, the uh, higher education is uh, untouched. Uh, uh, another sign of uh, another important number is that in 2014, Brazil has been the uh, second uh, country with the largest increase in the number of, of students uh, in the U.S., uh, which really shows the, uh, the, the vibrancy of the, uh, uh, of the cooperation in, in, in that area. But uh, as I said, the, the uh, effects are very strong in Brazil. We can see that, we can feel that from everything we uh, uh, here from uh, our friends, family, uh, colleagues in, in Brazil. Uh, young people in, in the uh, universities and higher education in Brazil, even those that are not taking part in the program, are energized by it. Uh, you have to, to compete for the, um, uh, for the possibility of uh, taking part in the program, so you have to uh, improve your English, you have to uh, improve your, uh, if you are coming to the US, of course, or to another uh, English speaking country, you have to uh, well, improve your abilities. So it's creating a, 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 a very healthy competition and uh, emulation uh, process. Uh, the interest, uh, interest for uh, uh, the engineering uh, areas and, and uh, hard sciences is increasing dramatically uh, over the last uh, two years uh, for the first time the number of uh, Brazilian uh, students enrolled in engineering courses has been uh, larger than the number of people enrolled in uh, law courses, which was the, uh, the number, nothing against lawyers, of course, uh, 
I'm not a lawyer, but my, my dad was a lawyer. <laughs> but uh, we have that sort of, I think it's a tradition of uh, uh, many uh, other countries of a similar culture, culture uh, of the centrality of, uh, of law and of lawyers in the, in the society, which is not changing. But uh, I think that's, uh, that's a sign of the times. And of course, it's not only because of the science mobility program, but it's part of the same, uh, the same process. And, and the uh, students that come back, those already tens of thousands of students, they, of course, they, they bring knowledge, but they also bring, uh, because normally it's, uh, they, they come for one year, and then they return to Brazil to complete their, to finish their courses. And uh, besides what they specifically learn in their uh, areas, they, of course, bring different experiences, experiences of uh, how other countries organize their universities, but also how they organize their societies. They bring the experience of uh, uh, other political systems, of other uh, uh, social systems. So it's uh, tremendously uh, uh, enriching. And uh, Brazilian society is waking up for the importance of, uh, uh, for the centrality of, uh, of education. I think uh, a very clear sign of that was during the, uh, the World Cup. Uh, uh, after, uh, sorry to remember that, our Brazilian friends, but after Brazil lost to Germany uh, by seven to one, uh, I, I read this inter interesting article that said, well, no, Brazil didn't lose by seven to one, we lost by 102 to zero, because that's the number of uh, Nobel Prizes that Germany has and the number of uh, Nobel Prizes that Brazil has. Unfortunately, Brazil still doesn't have any uh, Nobel Prize laureate. So um, it's, uh, I mean, Many people were commenting that in the blogs, etc. So, well, wow, why we should not worry about football? Okay, soccer it's important, but uh, we should worry about what's really uh, serious, and uh, and that's uh, I mean becoming a, a a country that is stronger in that central area of uh, of education. Uh, the all that all that set of policies, they uh, I think we can say they have three uh, dimensions. One is, uh, of course, the, the more obvious, which is economic, the idea of uh, through uh, moder more and better trained uh, engineers and uh, experts in uh, hard sciences to become more competitive in economic terms, attract more investment, be a, a stronger competitor in the, the global value chains, etc. Uh, another equally important is the, uh, the social aspect, which is less talked about, but uh, the biggest challenge of Brazil traditionally, historically, has been uh, to uh, become a more equal society, uh, uh, or at least a less unequal society. Uh, and I think that's happening. Uh, not I think, but uh, the, the numbers are there. And uh, most of people who um, study Brazil and who follow Brazil can see that uh, the, so the society is uh, changing in, in the good sense, uh, not only uh, uh, in terms of revenue, uh, which is also the, the, the disparity is becoming uh, less pronounced, but um, the, the, the feeling of people, the, the participation of people, the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, way different people use uh, services or interact with each other. So uh, Brazil is becoming a much less stratified society. People are interacting much more. Uh, and you can see that in, in the colleges because from more and more you have in Brazilian universities, people who come from, from public uh, schools and high schools, which tend to be, uh, historically tended to be uh, considered uh, of inferior quality to the, uh, uh, to the uh, private institutions and more expensive institutions. But now th that's changing also. And uh, there's a total, a totally different sort of, um, uh, of interaction. And the, the science mobility program is both a reflection of that, but also is reinforcing that, that process because it, it allows for the um, participation of, it doesn't have a, uh, an eco economic qualification criterion, but it, at the end of the day, it really allows for people who, uh, for students who otherwise wouldn't be able to, um, to go study abroad, to, to, uh, to have that experience. And it has a tremendous effect and uh, a tremendous um, uh, social equalization, let's say, effect. Um, and a third dimension is the dimension of uh, international relations. Uh, 
uh, even before that, that new uh, dynamism of education cooperation, we had very interesting experiences of uh, exchange, uh, especially within Mercosul, uh, which is a, a top priority for, uh, for Brazilian foreign policy for many years. Uh, and which is, of course, an economic integration process, but it already had a, a much uh, larger vision behind it. And uh, one of the not very spoken about areas, but very important areas of, of integration in Mercosul is uh, education. And one of the reflections is that uh, 20 years ago, uh, it was hard to find uh, any public schools in Brazil who taught uh, Spanish. And now, it, I think 90% of Brazilian kids in school they prefer elect to study uh, Spanish instead of uh, other uh, foreign languages. Uh, so much so that we have a, 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 an enormous uh, an attained demand for uh, Spanish teachers in in Brazil. And uh, I, I hear from from friends, especially in, in Argentina, who say that uh, it's very hard to find uh, a place in the uh, institutions that teach uh, Portuguese in, in Argentina as well. So much is so so much larger is the uh, is the demand. So, uh, uh, it, it has brought roots uh, to uh, stronger roots to the uh, integration process. Uh, I had the uh, the opportunity of also living and working in Brussels and the uh, mission to the uh, European uh, communities, and and there I, I could see also the importance of. Uh, as also as an aside, the importance of uh, education cooperation for European uh, integration, uh, and many uh, Europeans recognize that it was the uh, enormous facility that was created for European uh, higher education students to go study in, in different countries, uh, uh, that created a uh, or is creating in the in the new generations a, uh, a sense of belonging to something. Uh, to, to a project of, of being European in that case, and not only uh, nationals of, uh, of their countries. So, um, and in the case of our relations with the U.S., which is what concerns, of course, us here at the embassy, uh, education cooperation has become uh, uh, one of the many, of course, important areas, but maybe the area that always brings uh, good news and uh, uh, can generate uh, good, good feelings, good vibes for the, uh, for the relationship. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the, uh, the impact uh, of that specific area in, in the whole uh, uh, project, let's say, of, of Brazilian uh, foreign policy, in the case of the US, is very clear. It's, uh, it's an enormous and very positive uh, impact. Uh, and, and finally, uh, I would like to also to point that uh, bringing together, I think, those uh, economic and social dimensions of uh, uh, education policies, and uh, especially the uh, uh, the uh, uh, so science mobility program, we can see that what's happening in uh, Brazil is an enormous uh, enlargement of the talent pool that is available for the for the country for the society. Uh, Something obvious that what, what I'm going to say, but uh, it should be said anyway. Uh, the uh, the uh, biggest asset of Brazil is not territory, it's not natural resources, it's not pre salt, it's not oil, it's their people. It's our people. And uh, for many, many years, decades, uh, it was an untapped potential. Uh, population was large, but uh, maybe two thirds of the population wasn't part of the uh, economic process, was not producing, was not consuming, was not producing ideas or being part of, uh, of that. And, uh, and this has changed dramatically due to social policies, due to education policies over, uh, over the last uh, decade or two decades. <clears throat> Uh, in the sense of, uh, as I said, in, enlarging the, the talent pool. And, and by the mere fact that you have more people participating, uh, you generate, of course, more, more ideas, more solutions, maybe more problems as well, but uh, uh, you have a, a totally different society with the same number of people, but the dynamic is, is, totally, uh, is totally different. Uh, and of course, education is, is essential to, uh, uh, to tapping that, uh, that uh, talent pool. Uh, it's, um, and I think it's part of, the, uh, of, uh, 
uh, although the spotlight is on Brazil, but it's part of a, a universal phenomenon, that sort of uh, democratization of, uh, of society. I think that's happening uh, worldwide. That's the, uh, the, the bright side of globalization, of this globalization process that we have been living through uh, over the last couple of uh, decades or a little bit more. Um, uh, I think Brazil is kind of a microcosm of what's happening worldwide, of uh, people participating, especially th through the, uh, uh, the communications revolution, uh, exchanging and participate, uh, participating in the production uh, of, uh, of ideas and of solutions in a much, much stronger way than, uh, than before. So uh, we really believe that uh, Brazil is, is part of that, of that phenomenon. We can maybe... Uh, why not show, show the way in certain areas? In other areas, we have to, uh, to incorporate experiences from, from abroad, and, and that's what uh, exchange is about. But uh, I think the, the key point is that uh, sort of correspondence between the, uh, uh, the uh, development and democratization process at home and, uh, and abroad and, and worldwide. Thank you.